The purpose of this video is to provide an overview on the use of the Zazetsan no-touch torture technique to break individuals and destroy families. Zazetsan is a process of character assassination and threats. Its purpose is to poison every aspect of a person's life. Also called Kointelpro, no-touch torture, DND, Zazetsan was developed by the former East German secret police, the Stasi, to persecute dissidents. Today, some spy agencies in democratic countries are illegally using Zazetsan techniques on behalf of power elites and corporate interests, and for reasons that have nothing whatsoever to do with national security. Spy agencies such as Canada's CSIS and the UK's MI5 and MI6 are morphing into a secret police and persecuting innocent citizens for private interests. Since our politicians believe that these spy agencies can damage their careers, they are too scared of them to provide effective oversight. This video provides a blueprint in Zazetson, using the experiences of Patricia and Roderick Russell as a case study. I'm Patricia Russell. This is my husband, Roderick. We're going to discuss the experiences we've had with Zazetson. This all started after Roderick left Grosvenor International. This was a company which had head offices in San Francisco and Vancouver, Canada. There he was group controller. Before joining Grosvenor, he had an excellent track record of achievement and promotion. Yet he was blacklisted. He never again did find a job in Canada. I also had an excellent record of achievement with Grosvenor. Indeed, when I left Grosvenor, they gave me an excellent written reference, which I still have. Furthermore, during my notice period, I was twice asked to withdraw my resignation and stay on. Yet despite all this, I was blacklisted to the extent that over the next 20 years, I would never again find a permanent job in Canada. I should tell you that Grosvenor denies that they or any of their staff have ever made derogatory comments about me. A prominent lawyer has said of Grosvenor, that organisation has far too much power. Certainly the press have reported that their owner has mentioned his high-level relationships with British intelligence and he is known to be close to royalty. I was told that a senior executive in Grosvenor's Vancouver office also had spy agency connections. Over the years, the lies that the spy agencies have spread about me have varied. This is common in Zazetson. Zazetson lies are usually whoppers. As a German journalist said of Zazetson, it's about manipulating people by typical Stasi methods, hearsay, gossip, lies, spreading rumours. Later on, the intimidation and harassment started. We were living in West Vancouver at the time. We began to get unwelcome phone calls to our line with no answer. Hundreds and hundreds of such calls. We would pick up the phone, say hello, and nobody would answer. The caller never said a thing. Although, if we stayed in the line long enough, the caller would eventually hang up. We got between two to six unwanted calls a day, four to five days a week, for over a year. And then there was an occupied car parked at the foot of our garden. Most times when I walked out the front door, the car would be there, but the driver would start up his engine and drive off immediately. On a couple of occasions, he even parked in my carport and then started up and drove off when I came out of the house. Our home was under surveillance and being staked out. This was not covert, but overt surveillance, and they wanted us to know it. And that's intimidation. And then, when I went out somewhere, I was noticeably being followed. I was being stalked. And as for our email, it was going haywire. So I was being professionally lied about to render me unemployable and without funds, while also ostracizing us from the community and for those who might have helped. Meanwhile, we were getting harassed with hundreds of unwanted phone calls. Our house was under surveillance. I was being stalked 
and our email was going haywire. That's Zosetson. And so it might have stayed, except that I was crossing a street on a green light in London when a motorbike was accelerated very rapidly and straight at me. It swerved, I jumped, and it missed me by a hair's breadth. A few minutes later, a car stopped alongside me, and the hood who was driving it pointed out how easy it would be to kill me. All of these incidents are detailed on papers that Roderick has put on the internet. Their URLs are displayed at the end of this video for you to see. Running a motorbike at me was the start of a new process of threats. The old implied threats continued. The stalking, the telephone calls, the overt surveillance, the smear campaigns, the blacklisting, still continued and still continue today. But now my children and I were getting death threat calls, some of which are recorded, and threats from people in the street. Our dwelling house was smashed into by a vehicle that destroyed the brick porch. Shots were fired at my eldest son in front of a witness. I was hit in the head by a pellet fired from a moving vehicle and shots twice ricocheted around dogs that we were walking. Here are some categories of Zazetsun, as Zazetsun persecution comes from all angles. Before getting into the extent of the cover-up that goes with Zazetsun and the illegal involvement of several of our spy agencies, I'd just like to refer to two other topics. One is called street theatre and the other is the contribution that the Signal's electronic world makes to Zazetson, particularly with cyberbullying, computer, telephone and email interference. Street theatre is a known tool of Zazetson, where the spy agencies and others act out skits that are aimed at and often threatening to the target victim. For example, in one skit, a man acted having been stabbed in the throat. In another skit, a man appeared to have had his head kicked in. And in a third skit, they used vehicle license plates to send me the message rat gag to try and stop me from complaining about what was happening. It is routine that targets of the intelligence services have all of their communications, mail, email, telephone, effectively controlled. Telephone calls are tapped and listened into. Letters are intercepted and read, and also email. But it goes far beyond tapping. Calls are interfered with or cut off in real time. Some emails don't go where they are sent, and some letters are not delivered. A senior Canadian intelligence operative said this about Canada's intelligence agency, CSIS. And I'll quote him because I think it's worth it. He said, Living under CSIS investigation means that reliable contact is difficult or impossible. Sometimes the phone lines sound busy or disconnected or reassigned to a third party when they're not. Or you may get referred to a voicemail that isn't recording after the beep. Email is seldom received by me. I haven't received a single call on my cell phone throughout the summer." Unquote. In the world of cyberbullying, I've had quite a lot of comments, very vicious and nasty ones, put about me on the internet. But there was one in particular that I thought worth mentioning. Some years ago, there was a campaign to try and persuade me, or at least persuade people who were trying to persuade me, to commit suicide. And there were some very, very nasty websites put up. I was able to trace them back to source, collect the evidence, and I sent it to the police. Cyberbullying goes beyond that, of course. Uh, <clears throat> I've started up my computer in the morning to find a satanic screen rather than my normal screen being presented, or to find a, a screen with a pistol pointed at me being presented, or to find a screen with the words House of Tears flashing across it being presented. 
And cyberbullying, of course, goes far beyond that. It goes into your computer because it encompasses spy programs that read your database. It encompasses viruses that harm and destroy your computers. There are times when the perpetrators of Zazetson want to demonstrate to their victim that they can control his computer as if they had a separate terminal, which is more or less what it is, I think. I've sat typing out documents only to find paragraphs switching around 90 degrees, items I've just typed being falsely eliminated, items I've saved being deleted. I've found that when I've put pe things on other people's websites, it has occasionally been interfered with there. I recently sent some comments on a website for a magazine in the UK, and it was interfered with in their database, not in mine, not in transit. We were able to prove that, and the magazine wrote about it, and I've included this in the Russell Zazetson report. So, one of the things that goes on is constant interference, constant spying, constant threats. That is the electronic side of Zazetson. But then there's your emails. Quite frankly, sometimes I receive emails that are sent to me Sometimes I don't. Sometimes my emails get to source. Sometimes they don't get where I sent them. You really have no idea. It happens all the time. Sometimes emails that I've kept in my records get obliterated. I've twice had my emails in my database, 2,000 emails, completely annihilated. And as for telephone tapping, it's much the same, just par for the course. The telephones go through an interception center, so they can be controlled in real time, not just tapped. At one point, they played a game with us. One of my sons, who's in Europe, would phone once a week. For a year, he could only get through in the third phone call, and when I complained about it in the telephone, they stopped him getting through altogether. We've had interference to the extent that if I say something on a call that they don't particularly like, I'll get a noise of interference or just simply cut off. It happens all the time. People who've tried to call me have been told that my line is discontinued or sent to a voicemail that I don't get or just don't get through. Yet I'm here, they don't get through. So there's constant communications interference, whether it's computer-based emails within the computer or within the telephone itself. All of this electronic snooping and cyberbullying is referred to in some detail in the report Russell's and Zetson, starting on page 75 of the report, section J, My Communications. And that brings to an end the first part of this two-part video on our experiences of Zazetson. In the second and perhaps more shocking part, we go on to look at the silence and cover-up that surrounds the Zetson. Indeed, without a cover-up, there could be no Zetson. We look at what others have said about Zetson, including former spooks and the spy agencies themselves. We discuss the lack of effective political oversight over the intelligence agencies and we look at actual slides used by a real spy agency to train its operatives in Zazelson. Do please look at part two of this video. I think you will find it interesting. For those who prefer the printed word, here are some URLs where articles that I've written can be found. Thank you.